Hi, my name's Infinite, and you're listening to Infinite Rocket Power. This podcast will be conducted on a weekly or bi-weekly basis regarding topics in my life and different aspects and perspectives about life. Today's topic is friends. Who am I and who are you? When we speak on the topic of friends, this is viewed as a very broad topic. However, today we will dive deep into what is a friend? Are you a friend? And what kind of friend are you? As well as highlight some complex dynamics to what assists in evolving friendships. But before we get started, if you love K Spade, Betsy Johnson, or any other exclusive jewelry, please visit www.prosperityboutique.com. Be sure that you like and subscribe. Also located on eBay, Poshmark, Macari, and we now have digital art available. Now, today we are going to introduce ourselves. We have some fresh faces in the house. Hey, Nisia. Hey, Infinite. Hi. I'm Dee Dee. And where are you from, Miss Dee Dee? I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. So, yo, 601. All right. And what do you do here in Horizon? Don't you have a, a, a down south bar and grill? Yes, I do. I do have down south bar and grill. That's the only world I help. I have collaboration with people, but yeah, that's the world I got with the underboss. And um, I have events like every every Friday or Saturday night. So yeah. All right. All <clears throat> Shout out to the down south bar and grill. Hey, Miss B Aroma. Hello, everyone. My name is B Aroma Scent. Well, my name is B, and I am the CEO of B Aroma Scent. Form, well, now it's going to be B Organics. Y'all going to do, I'm doing away with B Aroma Scent. I rebranded, and I am now B Organics. Same great product, but just a different name. Um, I'm here in Horizon. I have a, sto- two, a store here in Horizon. I also have a store in Alt Space. Um, both of them are, are named Bee's Beauty Supply Store, where I sell my products, my 100% organic, urban-fused, um, nut-ingredient-free hair and beard products. And you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. All right. Love it. Love it. Hey, Craig Goddess, how you doing? <laughs> Hey, Infinite, how you doing? My name is Craig Goddess, y'all, as Infinite said. And I'm a full-time hard candy maker. All hard candy is cooked to a crack. So that's where you get the crack goddess from. (laughs) I'm pretty much a networking queen in Horizon, a social butterfly. I do build worlds, um, but for the most part, I love empowering the people. So right now, I'm currently doing the Empowerment Society by HIP, supporting all of my fellow creators in Horizon and showing the new people the way. So, yeah, tap in. Love it, love Mm -hmm. it. Miss Shay Arts in the building. How everyone doing? I'm Shay Arts. The arts is for my, my IRL brand, A Real Touch by Shay Zam. I sell paint kits and do custom um, artwork. In the metaverse, I'm promoting my arts brand with the digital art and the virtual worlds that I'm able to create. And 2023 is all about integrating my IRL art with my virtual art. So follow me on Instagram at Real Touch LLC at Shay Arts underscore VR. And also my YouTube channel, which is 901 Arts. Love it, love it. <clears throat> and we have a fresh new face in the building, Miss Ferrari Monet. How you doing, Ferrari? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Well, I'm Ferrari Monet. I'm one half of my other half. <laughs> um, we have Cameo, the club going right now. We just opened our office for business. If you need builds or promotions by me, or interior decorating when we're working with a whole team now and we just published it two days ago so you can come by get some stuff done um i have a house coming out and it's a surprise in the house whenever um i publish it you'll see it um one other thing we have a podcast going to kp experience and we do those every now and then so that's what i got going all right make sure y'all check the kp experience out <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. A lot of times we as indiv- <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of times as we as individuals grow, we would like for the people that we knew in the beginning 
of the stages of life to come with us to be involved in our evolution and continue to witness greatness as we witness theirs. However, however, oftentimes we notice on our way to the top or while pursuing our goals, we notice that the people that we started with no longer support us or just simply disappear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which raises the question, are they genuinely happy for you? And why aren't they genuinely happy for you? When it was their birthday, weren't you there? When it was their time to shine, weren't you there to support them? So with that being said, the phrase, with friends like that, who needs enemies? So I want starting this off, I want to ask every one of you all, would you consider yourself a good person and a good friend? Both or neither? Ms. Nicia. Um, I consider myself a, you know, I can't really talk for those that, you know, my friends, but I can say I'm a good person as far as I know how to support. You know, I support my friends and either, either way they go, like they have events, I'm going to be there. If I can't be there, I'm going to let you know, like, look, I can't be there this time. And then you got some friends that be like, when you can't be there, they get mad at you. And you'd be like, I'm saying I'm going to be there that one time. But, you know, I just try to either talk it out. If I can't talk it out, you can just, I just forget about it. You know, I try to be a good friend. You know, I can't just speak for those. But I think I am a good person. I don't think I'm a perfect friend. I'm not going to be perfect. But, you know, okay. I think I am perfect. All right, Miss B. Aroma. I think I'm a great friend. I really do. I'm there for everybody. I'm there for them more than people are for me. But I, I feel like I'm a great friend because if you need me and I and I got it, you got it. If, if I can do it for you, I'm going to do it for you. I'm never going to say, oh, I'm going to do such and such. And then you looking for me like, you know, you said you was going to do this for me. And, and I and I'm got excuses or don't even answer or don't respond. If I can't do it, you're going to know it ahead of time that I can't do it. Gotcha. Are you a good person? A, a person? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a great, I'm a good person. Yes. <laughs> you know, when you, when you say a good person, that, that, that can be broad because people may look at you not to be a good person because you didn't do something for them just because you didn't do it for them. But I'm I'm a good person because I have integrity. I, I'm going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. Period. You know, so that considers me to be a good person. Gotcha. I respect that. All right. Miss Craig Goddess. So, oh, excuse me. I've been up all night, y'all. Okay, so yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I consider myself a good person, and I consider myself a good friend. Um, but I am gonna say there is one thing about me that some people don't like, and I don't care if they like it or not. I'm, I'm a person with morals, with morals. You know, what I'm saying right is right and wrong is wrong, and I stand on it. If I'm right. I, I stand on that and you treat me bad, I'm going to still stand on what I said. If I'm wrong and you get me right, I'm going to say I am sorry. I don't have a problem with doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because not all the time you're going to be right. It's different perspectives to, to life than just yours. So I tend to take myself out of my shoes a lot and put myself in other people's shoes before I make a decision on if morally they did the right thing by me or not. So morally, sometimes it be no they ain't do right you know and you got to cut that person off it hurt but you got to do what you got to do for yourself because when you are a good person and you are a good friend you may tend to go out out of your way for people because when i call people my friend i treat them like i treat myself 
So if they need something, they can always call my phone. If they're going through something, I'm there to answer my phone and talk to them. If they lost somebody, I'm calling their phone every motherfucking day and just to check on them. If they answer, they answer. They don't, they don't. You know what I'm saying? I send a text message just to let them know, like, my girl, I know you told me you are going through this. I was just checking on you, make sure you're all right. You know, so, yeah, I consider myself a good friend, a too good of a friend, honestly, and too good of a person for um certain people but as long as i protect my energy and keep um those around me that i feel uh fall in line with my morals then we good other than that we'll get a little ratchet i can get a little bad i can be a bad person now. but but i'd be good most i'd be real good you know i'm 95 good person I love but that five percent is a hell of a five <laughs> <laughs> Miss Shay Arts. Mm-hmm. Well, I would consider myself a good friend, and that's because the people that are attracted to me, we sh- we share energies, and so people that vibe together, um, they usually vibe. So I consider myself a good friend. Um, do I consider myself a good person? I do. But with that also comes, um, I can be, for the back, uh, for the better lack of a word, um, antisocial. I can be introverted. And so my friends that truly understand me, that understands my personality and why I may be as I am, we're friends, we're cool. People that I may be acquaintances with may see me you know, may see me differently, but they don't understand that. So, um, friend, intric- friend relationships have been intricate, weird for me growing up. And so I consider myself a good friend. I consider myself a good person, even though I might not necessarily always be nice, but there's a difference between being a good person and doing good and being considered a friendly, nice person. Right. She got a point because I, yeah. I was that friendly nice mm. at one point. Miss <laughs> Ferrari. Um I I'm a great friend. <laughs> definitely. Um I definitely try to support my friends and everything that they do. If I can make it, I am there. Um that's on here and that's in real life. Um I feel like I'm always honest with them, whether it's gonna hurt their feelings or not. I'd rather you know the truth than to keep something inside or tell you this and it's really that. You know, I don't deal with people like that because it's like you're gonna send me out the house looking crazy if you can't tell me the real. You're supposed to be my friend. So I usually go with like minded people like me. Um just a laid back person. So most of the people I deal with just laid back like me. Um, am I a good person in general? Yes. But catch me on the day when you done, you know, I had a bad day and you done said the wrong thing. <laughs> and yeah, it, it, it could be a problem. But for the most part, I'm a good person. I try to be at least because what I put out, I want it to come back to me. Like, I want that energy back. So, yeah, I'm a good person generally. Okay. And uh, for myself, I would consider myself a wonderful friend. And a, a really good person. I feel like, I, like Crack says, she feels like she's too good of a person sometimes, especially in this tainted ass world that we live in with all these toxic mm-hmm. ass people, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Xavier oh, uh, will hopefully be with that us. That was here a good shortly. question. Because I wanted to ask him that, but we were going to make sure we ask him the same question. It seems like nowadays friendships are harder to obtain, maintain, and sustain. Started with mm-hmm. Nixia, what do you feel like is a factor on some of the reasons why people lean towards having an associate than having and maintaining a friendship? Why do people, okay, say it again, why do people what are some lean on having it? What do you feel like are some uh factors on so why why re uh what do you feel like are some factors on why people lean towards having an associate 
station associates uh being associates than having a friendship Do I have to go first? Miss B, you're wrong. Okay, crack. Oh, go ahead, B. Oh, B can go first. (laughs) Well, I'm a woman of of age now. And if you wasn't my friend from back in the day, we're not friends. We're associates now. Because friends, that's that's a mesh. People take that word friendship lightly. And that's until we can we can get on the same page and we're you know we have that mesh, we're just associates. Now we on that mesh, we on that same page, we friends. But as, until then, we're associates. But I think that's more of um, that associate now is this day and age, <clears throat> the um, the youth today because they they don't cherish friendships. And they haven't cherished friendships like from kindergarten, from first grade, stuff like that. You know, I ha- I have friends from from elementary school. Mm-hmm. Then I also have associates, people that I I may speak to from time to time, people I'm cool with, whatever. Those are people that can't come to my Thanksgiving dinner. Those folks they can't come to my house. But we'll, you know, we'll talk to each other from time to time. But you can't come to my house. Now my friends can come to my house. It's, it's a big difference. Go ahead, crack. Crack. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna say what makes a friend different than an associate for me is, um, who they are don't align with who I am. So, um, like, sometimes you can have a lot of friends, and if you want a lot of friends, you can have as many friends as you want, as long as they align with you and who you are as a person, and they understand you, and you understand them, and y'all have a relationship. Like B said, I don't take that word friendship lightly. I treat it like a real relationship. Like, if you my friend, we together. Okay, we together. Okay, and um, long story short, you my friend. So it's like we keep in contact, we keep in touch with each other. We got each other's personal numbers. We DM, you know, we DM. We we um pro we support each other's businesses. Like we um help each other get to the next level. Like if you going through a situation and you like, well, crap, how do I goddamn get from here to here? I'm like, okay, so this would be the move right here. We, we we make plans together. Like, um, and some people don't have those characteristics that you would like to be that friend. So a friend is somebody that you can talk to. It's almost like talking to yourself. When I talk when I talk to my friends, it's like I'm talking to me and you is like me. So you will be able to give me information that's going to motivate me, that's going to help me, that's going to push me. You get what I'm saying? And when I'm having a situation, or, you know, or you having a situation, back, so on and so forth. So it's more so like it's um it's a real relationship, you know. And in friendships, once you, like, develop real relationships with your friends, there are times where you're not in contact with each other often but y'all still done had that time to spend with each other and get to know each other and to kind of, you know, push each other in directions and da, 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 da. And then you just might check in a month later and say, hey, my girl, what's up? What you doing? And it's like y'all never live because that's a, that's a friend. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Friends understand. They they understand. They get it. Like, they don't care. They don't give a damn. If you're going through some shit and you DM your fucking friend and, or you call your friend and you say, hey, boo, can, you, can, I, can I talk to you for a second? And they'll be like, yeah, give me a call right now. You know, because you know they might be out and about it at their shop. You know, whatever they doing. And you talk to them like, girl, tell me why. And your friends, they'll be able to ones that you can tell shit to. They not going to tell nobody shit no matter what. Like, y'all can have an argument. They not finna tell your fucking business. They not finna go on social media. They not finna do none of that. Like, friend, I feel like friends are like husbands and wives husbands and wives to your life and it's almost like you talking to uh another part of you because you really are because they are like you they are of you so it's like um i feel like that's why people uh, prefer 
to call I, I don't put labels on nobody but for the most part I feel like that's why more more people have like more associates than close friends because not a lot of people align with who they are and things like that so or they 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 wouldn't understand like some people they have separation anxiety when it comes out of their friends they feel like if you don't call them tomorrow or you don't call them by friday y'all friendship mm-hmm. over or you don't <laughs> love them no more and you're mm-hmm. like what the fuck girl i've been do you know what i've been doing you i talk to you all the time girl you know what i be doing in the, i told you i had this going on and it'd be that they don't they don't understand you like they're not able to take their shoes off their feet and put them in yours for one minute and may think what could my friend possibly be going through right now? Mm-hmm. I wonder is is her baby's okay? I wonder is she okay? I wonder if her job still going good. Let me let me call and check on her. And she don't answer her phone and I'm asking her text. She don't text message me back. I'm like, oh shit, time to pull up. And it's time to go pull up and see is my friend okay? You oh. know what I'm saying? Because so, I, I, I know by the friend. So it depends on who my friend is. and Because, you know, you'll know all your friends separately. So if I call one of my friends and she may not answer the phone, she may not text, she may be the type that don't like to talk when she's going through stuff. And I know she's going through something. She's going to call me when she's ready. That's like, you know your friends. Like, you, you'll know your husband or you know your wife in the male perspective. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's why I feel like people put more so associated, you like, we friends, but to a certain extent. So it'd be like, y'all be <laughs> friends, but it'd be just like to a certain extent until y'all build a relationship. Like the other day, and it's crazy you asked this, the other day, one of my friends on here asked me, Craig, are we friends? I said, we friends on here. I said, we we cool with the fuck. I said, we working on our friendship. I said, we building the friendship. I said, but as far as me calling you my friend, no, you're not my friend. Not yet. We working on it. And then every time she see me that she was like, you know, cause I'm I just waiting on my application to be the friend, you know. I'm like, don't do me like that, girl. <laughs> we I, we just gotta build a relationship. I don't know you. It's like I don't know you to to call you my friend yet. I don't and know you. I wanna that? know you. <laughs> yeah. It's like I wanna know you. Like I need to know what my friend favorite color is. I need to know what my friend like to do. Like all of that. It's like a real relationship. So I'm because saying that's some why. people some people feel like because we enjoy the same things and we enjoy each other's company, we friends. That doesn't exactly. make us friends. It don't. We just like the same things. Uh-huh. Friends are ride or die. Exactly. I got friends yeah. I can talk to six mm-hmm. years from now. From like, now. girl, and let me tell call. you. Girl, yes. get all the years with it's, her. It, like, it'll yeah. be like we just talked to each other yesterday. Mm-hmm. Now, now associates, you see, that's a that's a, a high and by situation. We 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 might enjoy the same space. We don't hang out with each other. We just know each other. You know, yeah. and that that's not a that's not a friend. A friend, you that's a ride or die. Yeah, we go that's we go you through hell and high water. We could be mad Tom at girl. each other and call each other tomorrow. Yeah. Like, girl, fuck that. Whatever we did, what happened yesterday, we still we friends. Yeah, but we There's gonna get into that. We gonna get into that so-called ride or die situation. Do we gonna get into that too? We gonna get into that. Look at <laughs> Infinite. I love Infinite. Be keeping it coming, baby. Yes, yes. Y'all make sure y'all share this show, baby, because we get into it over here. Share this podcast, baby. Miss Shay Arts. Miss Shay Arts. Mm-hmm. Um, repeat the question again. I got <laughs> Let's see here. What do you feel are some factors or the main reasons of why people have more associate are willing to have more associates than friendships? Okay. Bless um, you. Only speaking from personal experience, um, my growing up situation um, was wild. I mean, I never was able to go like to the same high school twice. Like I moved around every year. I was never able to develop like you know, like, kindergarten friendships, like, you know, like that. So I've always grown up with fleeting friends. Fact. Mm -hmm. So I've always grown up with fleeting friends. And so I've learned to develop to enjoy people with their energy in that moment. And I always have that mind that, you know, you have a season. Everyone's there for a season. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether that season is long or short. Uh, my husband is my best friend. I've lived with him yeah. longer than I've lived with my parents or my sisters. Like, in the terms of how long we've been married to how long I've stayed with family, he's my longest friendship. And so, um, with that perspective, everyone that 
you know, that I meet, I usually view them straight off as acquaintance. I mean, I have no reason to uh, to not think of that unless it's shown that we don't want to share the same energy. So I go to people for the energy they give, for the energy that I, you know, I have my friends that I rap with. I have my friends that I talk business with. I have my mm-hmm. friends that um, we do some weird shit with. Mm-hmm. It depends on what vibe that what what that's in. With that being said, I, I consider myself a good friend because we know where we stand with each other, and I try to let that be known um, with whatever relationship. So, um, I believe most people have associates because it's fleeting. Um, with the time and age that we grew up with now, it's different from how we grew up um, from the relationships that we had when we were younger. Um, so I believe that in my case, I have a, more associates. I view everyone with good faith, good positivity and association. And the few people that I call my friends, I call them my friends because we share the most energy um, in terms of not even that we have the same things in common, but we share, we we, we share energy. I'm a spiritual person. So, um yeah, so I have a few friends, but they're um, they're few, and they're the few that truly understand um, my vibe. But everyone else, I view as a positive acquaintance, and I treat everyone. With, I try to give everyone that same energy, whether um, we've known each other for long or not. Um, but the few that mm-hmm. that are really that we that I truly vibe with, those are my friends. Like it's known where we stand with each other, and that's that's on lock. Mm-hmm. I feel that. I feel that. Miss Ferrari. Definitely. Um, I pretty much agree with how everybody said what they said because um I probably have more friends. <laughs> That's the only thing. Because I want people around me, like I said before, that are like me. They might have their own personalities, but in general, we all pretty much good people. We keep the same energy, we honest. It's just like I want an honest person around me. I think that's my biggest thing. Being honest with me is up here for me. Like, if you can sit up there and honestly tell me, like, girl, I don't think that look good on you. Like, you need to go back to the drawing board. That don't work. <laughs> or we going out somewhere. Girl, you got something on your face. Like, let me get it off. You know, because some people say they're your friends, but they'll let you got, go out the door any type of way. Or right. you seen them somewhere and such and such is talking about, and they come over there to you like, oh, such and such was talking about you, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, well, what were you doing? You were sitting there listening to it? You didn't stop them? I'm going to stop them. Why are you talking about my friend? This conversation needs to stop. I need friends around me that going to defend me like I'm going to defend them. So I hang around friends because sometimes associates they can really stab you in the back like mm-hmm. <laughs> because they're not caring about you as much as your friend. So they don't owe you no loyalties. They don't care about none of that. Look, we cool. They might consider your friend. They might consider themselves your friend, but sometimes they not. They just, some people are there, they're jealous or they hate on you. So let me get close to her right quick. See what her weakness is. Let me see what, because, you know, it's crazy how so many people really have ill intentions in this world. Uh-huh. And it don't cost nothing to be a good person to somebody because you want that back too. So I pretty much keep more friends around me than associates because they can turn into enemies real quick with me. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I also feel like in this society, um, it's so fast paced. It's such a microwavable society. It's so convenient for people mm-hmm. to have associates. And I believe, you know, Shay touched on that when she yeah. responded. Um, it's, it, no one's in depth. No one's having deep conversations. No one's really trying to get to know you or really, they really don't give a fuck. You know, they trying to, you know, record everything and, you know, it's not, no genuine gestures. I'm sorry. I had to go to the bathroom. Are oh, you good? And Miss Nisia. Okay, so now I understand the question now, so yeah, I read it. Um, sorry about that, y'all. Um, associates, I, with associates, I'm going to go to a personal standpoint. You know, when you were younger, you have all these friends and your mama say, okay, that friend not for you. I don't mm-hmm. think that friend good for you. And you'd be like, nah, I think she, I think she all right when I was younger. I think she okay with mama could say, all right, you'll see. But as I got older, 
I started wanting friends. Like when I was young, I started wanting friends and started like being nice. And then as I got older, I was like, now I'm seeing why she keeps saying it. Cause you know, friends is not, you know, friends is not gonna do you any type of way. They're not gonna talk behind your back. When I had was I had a high school best friend. And we did everything together. We shared like common things together. We went shopping, everything. But once I started hearing her say like stuff like wish for I would say like, oh girl, let me tell you these. I heard so 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 talk behind your back. And da da da. I'm like, but you probably be my best friend. So what did you what did you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She'll never come tell me what I say. So when I start dissing myself from her, she was like, Oh, you you being fake. It's not me being fake. Is me knowing who you are now. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to do. We still cool, but I don't want to be your friend. We can't be close. Because now I'm, I'm trusting you with my stuff. I trusted you with my secrets, everything, and now I can't trust you. You betrayed it. Because what is you telling these folks that I can't even trust you for because you keep coming back to me telling me what these folks saying. So as I get older, after I went through high school, I, was at, I still have this from my friend from high school, I can honestly say to this day. And once we became friends, she never, I ain't never seen her say anything about it. If she did, I know that she took, she took, you know, she, let me see. I know that she, you know, stood up for me behind my back. She defended you. Face. She defended mm. me. There's one thing that I looked at with her, her loyalty. Even we got mad at each other, we don't talk. She still, we we get mad at each other for a week, and she still come back and say, we still act like we cool when we see each other again. We're like, okay, you you done being mad now? Okay, cool. We go back into talking. We still friends to this day. We've been friends for 10 years. I still consider her the best loyal friend I ever had. I had other friends I just just lost. I just considered it like Shayar said, it was a season. It was just time to go. I mean, like, mm -hmm. but associates, I only, I don't, I don't fool with people in real life, not too many females. I have more guy friends than anything, but females, I don't. Yeah. Because I watch out for everything. Like, females nowadays in my day age i'm 26 years old so the females i see today they messy they do all this different stuff they don't know the true definition of friendship i oh. go out and i'm gonna support you i won't talk behind your back i'm more honest than anything that's why i don't have many female friends because i can't be honest because i'd rather be honest with you than anything i can't lie to you if i lie to you right. then i don't want you lying to me so i'm more right. blunt and they hate and ain't I, wrong with I it. I feel like a lot of people don't like honest black people. Mm -hmm. It's a gift in they the don't. Mm -hmm. And I just be like, mm -hmm. why? Why would you want somebody Girl, you fake around you? Mm -hmm. And you, yeah, and you rather have models. people fake, fake yeah. than people that's real that's going to tell you what's real the and truth. what's on their mm -hmm. mind and how they feel. And that's why I be on friendship. I do that in here. Like, even here, I have more associates in here than in the real world because in here I got more see, friends in here than the real it's world. It's more energy. I, mm -hmm. I feel energy because I don't know, you know, the facial, mm -hmm. but I feel the energy. Like, I meet good people. Um, I met Tiny Faith on here. I consider her a good friend, close friend, because she showed me we met in real life. And we just click, but I'm still like, we still been on that friendship. We call each other best friend, but we still like building because we talk every single day, y'all. And I've been through there for her, do her dad's loss, everything. And she been there for me. Yeah. And I just consider her a good close friend that I met on here. So, yeah, that's why I stands on it. All right. So I want everybody to finish this uh, equation. <laughs> Jealousy <laughs> okay. plus friend equals starting with you nisi jealousy plus friends equals i guess a jealous <laughs> um jealous plus friend equals they not a friend <laughs> they not okay. a friend just okay. equals not a friend all right be a roma sent
jealousy plus friend means equals no friend because there cannot be jealousy in friendship. We there's no way we can be jealous of one another and still be friends. There's no way. But does it matter what they're jealous right. of? Yes, it does. Because if, if you that envious of what I have or what I'm doing, ask me how I got it. And if I'm your friend, I'm going to show you how to do it. There will be no need for jealousy because if we friends, you already know how to do it because I'm sharing it with you. Okay, but what if they was jealous that you had a, you came up on a two-parent household? That's not my fault. Well, that's not my fault at all. But y'all still and that's still going to that's still going to hinder our friendship. Nisi? Oh, no, oh, I'm not baby. She can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't raising her hand <laughs> oh, God. but you know any type of jealousy in any friendship whether it be in, in relationships in marriage in friendship that's going to hinder the relationship there's no way y'all can stay in an honest truthful loving relationship if there's jealousy and if you my friend why are you jealous of my, me growing up in a two-parent household? That's that's all to it. Why are you jealous at all? Yeah. But Correct. do you really know what your friends really jealous of? Unless they tell you. I mean, I've experienced somebody telling me that. Wow. Mm. I've experienced that too. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, females will tell tell you, you know, if you one of the females they like let's say crack kicks with, she got a lot of homies. Like Nisi said, she got a lot of homies. I don't experience women say, Hey, I'm jealous because you you hang out with a lot of dudes. And don't even be on that level, mm -hmm. but they don't so, understand. Right. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. what I'm gonna say is jealousy friends jealousy plus friends equals death. And I say that because it does. Um, cause for one, just because you, they say they're your friend, it does not mean they are your friend. Friendship is proven mm -hmm. by actions. And mm -hmm. I feel as though, um, you can't be quick. That's why you can't be quick to call people your friends and think that they're your friend. They can tell you that they're your friend all day, but if those actions does not follow, it equals death. It kills your spirit. It'll tear you down. It'll do things, tell you, girl, don't do that. It'll hinder your growth. You tell them about ideas and plans you got they'll tell you no uh -uh, i don't think that's a good idea for you and that idea could be the best idea for you and they know it and they'll tell you that but guess what you that's why you gotta you gotta you know be just be mindful of the signs because it, it can kill your spirit it can kill you motherfucker could be so jealous of what you got kill you shoot you 10 times like they did my brother you know what i'm saying like because he thought somebody was his friend cousin you know what i'm saying and uh yeah jealousy plus friendship or somebody you thank your friend is the let somebody show you that they your friend all right i agree with that miss shay arts right <laughs> that's where i'm from the hood so they had it go <laughs> i'm gonna say um jealousy um plus friendship um there really is envy mm -hmm. and that's something that i don't that i don't stand for me personally um i believe yeah. that it's inherently human and it's all it's okay and it's natural to be jealous that is a natural human feeling but how you how you can how you what you do with that energy defines whether you're a friend or not you can be jealous. Okay, I got friends here that's getting monetized left or right. I haven't got monetized. I can be jealous. I can have that feeling of, damn, why, what they doing that I'm not doing and why I'm not getting monetized. But I instead of using that energy to feel and, so, and dwell in that energy, I can put that energy back out to, I'm happy my friend got monetized. Whatever the case of why I haven't got monetized, I can be happy and I can, I can move past those feelings. I can, I know how to consolidate my feelings. So I personally have been in the relationships and friendships where I have felt jealous because I don't have long lasting. I haven't had a long lasting friendship like some people may have. I can look at 
look at someone's relationship and honestly and take accountability for I know how I'm feeling without putting or putting that energy back out to them because of whatever. So, um, jealousy for friendship is envy. And if you feel that from someone, you need to talk about it. It's not just, okay, I feel she's jealous of me. She's not my friend. Um, if you're a friend, you will vocalize and you will communicate. And communication is key in my friendships and relationships. So I believe in, um, if you feel jealous or if, if you feel jealousy from a friendship, from a friend, how your friend moves with that jealousy, whether they let it they let their energy go or whether they hold on to it defines whether they're really a friend or not. Mm. Mm. Yeah, That's my yeah. thing on it. <laughs> it's my name. It's my name. <sighs> just for me, it just equals trouble because it's like when you see it, like you know what it is, like your senses. Your, I call it your mm. spidey senses. <laughs> they start tingling about that person, oh, and I itch. feel like it's always right. Like it never fails you. So I always go with my first mind now because when I doubt it. That's when stuff happens with a friend, so-called friend, associate, whatever you want to call it. So I always watch that person when that kind of stuff comes up because it's the reason why you feel like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I tend to watch people. <laughs> like, I'm a person that likes to Can you to send devil an invite? Listen or come in a situation and adjust to the situation. I don't just Shay. come in and just start speaking because I don't know what's going on. But you can, can you walk send devil an invite? a lot of stuff. I walk been on a so-called friend before talking about me but mm -hmm. you're around me every day this not no just anybody you're around me every day but you're talking to this person like as if i'm your enemy i don't know what i've done to you wow come to find out mm -hmm. you're jealous of the way i grew up oh. but my mom treated you just like another daughter there was no difference and then it comes mm -hmm. out one day like, oh, your job's just so easy. You don't have to do things like I have to. I said, wait a minute. You have the same privileges and everything like I do. If you want to work for our family business, you can do that anytime. My mom will hire you. So what you just did was uncalled for. If you had a problem, come tell me. That friendship ended. I treated her like my cousin, like almost like my sister. We was friends because it's kind of like a generational thing. Her and my mom were friends, and then we're friends, mm -hmm. and, you know, it goes like that. So we've been around each other since diapers, and now this is the way we are. I just mm. myself so quick. Wow. And that it hurt because we were so close, and it's just like, not you. You. Are you the last person? Right. So you it was a lot, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like when I was younger, I thought it was still possible to, <laughs> I still thought it was possible, you know, to still be friends with that person. But it's like, and when I look mm -hmm. back at it, it, like in time, I realized that same person was the one giving me the badass advice I took. The same person was, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> encouraging, you know, right. dumb stuff, you know, and I'm like, wow, I really mm -hmm. got sent out on that one. <laughs> You can never have a successful relationship with anybody that has envy in their heart. Never. Exactly. Never. Exactly. They will, they will, it will eventually become, become an action, right? And, you know, in the beginning, it, it's just a thought, but then it will become an action. And then slick stuff will start to come out of their mouth. And oh. you'll be like, wait a minute, was that for me? You know, was that for me? You know, and, you know, checking yourself to see, you know, what did I do for, for that? you know, for that, that type of language to come towards me. But then you'll start to understand there's some envy somewhere in that, you know, that's the reason for that way of speaking to me like that. And eventually you'll, you'll get tired of that or won't want to be bothered. And that relationship will depositate. It will go away. It will go away. You can, you can never have any good relationship with anybody with jealousy in, in the middle of it. It can't, it can't happen. Oh, yes. Unless y'all two jealous people. <laughs> Very true. So let me ask you this. If lovers have the foundation of friendship, why are the levels of accountability different from friend 
from friends to lovers. So, like, you know, for example, you know, I done fell out with my so-called friend about some petty, you know, that should have been, I told you ahead of time, I wasn't going to be able to make it, you know, I'm always there, you know, woo woo But this nigga done, you know, did some rogue stuff as far as went to every ATM in the city and, you know, went into your bank account and, you know, federal law-breaking things. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the bad guy. You don't have a penis. Exactly. <laughs> but how is that? That doesn't make it okay, though. It don't make but it you okay. Can, but you don't have a penis. You can't make her feel like that penis do. So you saying just because of, of <laughs> being digmatized, I, I, basically. I no. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, what was the yeah. question again? I want to make sure I give you the appropriate answer. Because I heard you say that I can miss an event, I can do this and I can do that, and I can tell you I had some more stuff going on, and you'll be mad at me. But this nigga can sit right here and do all of that, and you can forgive mm-hmm. him and let him back in, and we not be friends no more. Mm-hmm. So, do you yeah. tell her that, or is you're just telling us that? No, I'm not for right is, now. This, this that's what she's sure. saying. This, yeah. You can't this blow her back out. Yeah. No, I'm you saying. No, I'm you saying. You can't blow her no, back I'm saying, out. Did you go, tell her that? Did yeah. you Did you tell her like you could be mad at me, like, but never, you can't we, be mad at she him? She shouldn't even have been mad at me about the petty stuff she was mad at. Number one, and then number two, it, mm-hmm. and, and if I you made can't make her forget it. You can't make her forget it. That's all to it. You can't make her forget it. But how are you holding on to petty shit? But this nigga is going into your bank account. Because he going to go down, he going to go in, and he going to make her forget it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And you can't do it. And and then then she probably mad because you said that and you made that comparison. But she didn't know. I didn't make that comparison. She probably And she don't forget it because she comes venting to me about it. She come to vent me about this bullshit. You get what I'm saying? And she'll go right back to the going but down you and the going and in. Stuff in her face what she <laughs> but, to you about like, I ask the same question every time I fall out with, like with somebody like my friend like over petty stuff it could be like little petty stuff like just something petty and then they be like we ain't friend no more then they go they made this so 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 on that list and they uh, forgive them quicker than they forgive you that's mm-hmm. what you saying like that's what that's what it is like in general. But like B said, it's the it's the peas. We can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't do nothing with that. We can't do that. That's, that's, that's a whole different thing. You, you cannot heard, but make me forget. But, 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 no, I understand that the penis ain't going to make you forget. But at the same time, if that penis ain't giving you what your friends give you as well, you know, you come for me for emotional support. You come for me telling me about all this stuff. You wasting my, I'm picking up help and pick up your motherfucking kids because that nigga ain't doing shit right now. Uh, hello? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't understand. They like the deep, they like the deep boy. So that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. But people, but some women settle for you won't. She's settling for any man, whether he's doing good or he's not. Just to say, I got a man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes it easier for her not to forgive you of anything you've done. And she ain't forgave him nothing. But if she get mad and put him out, she won't have a man. You can't come over and give her what he give her. Yeah. But it, it, even if it's just penis, some women are that shallow that all they need is a pe- is a penis, and that's their validation. You know, you have other women, right? You have other women that want more from a relationship. That's somebody that wouldn't tolerate just a penis. I'm it's sad to say that there are women. Yeah. Honey, I'll put you down on something that you won't never do a penis again. <laughs> Me, I'm not like that. We can scratch that out, scratch that out. Don't don't record that. <laughs> Let me go back on mute. <laughs> I can't even compute. I've been with the same penis over ten years now, like and so he's my best friend, so I his level of compa- his 
level of accountability is higher. I might be hard on him for something. I won't be as hard on my friends about. Um, but I've never felt I was a friend over a guy. Uh, and I've never, I don't think I've ever lost a friendship over something really petty unless it was something that they couldn't forgive. Because I'm pretty, I feel like I'm a pretty forgiving, grace-giving person. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I never <clears throat> had that type of thing. Okay, so if you don't all mind sharing with that being said, uh, starting we're gonna start with uh Ferrari. Well, mm -hmm. if that's okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, what is one of the things that you fell out with one of your friends about that you feel like it it it, it, it was it could have been repairable, but because of the circumstance or whatever, you just let that let it go. Um, the one I just told you about, like that's really because I don't really get into it with my friends. So that was, um, I, like I said, she was like a sister to me. Okay, basically what happened was um, my guy sister started hanging out with us after a while because for the longest it was just me and her going to clubs, all that stuff. We went to the same school, everything. Like we were always together. Um, high school came around and that's when I met my guy sister and she started to hang out with us. Nothing wrong with it at first, none of that. But they have to understand this was my, like, why well, I call her my cousin. So she knows sometimes I got to be with my family and I can't go out with y'all, like, because my family's very family oriented. She could have came, but she didn't want to. So I was like, what's up with that? You usually come along. Okay. That's when I noticed things changing. So I'm like, all right. It was this one day. I was at my brother's house. We were kicking it. And I told him, I said, well, it's raining and stuff. Who wants to hang out when it's raining? That's not me. I don't want to go out in the rain and stuff like that. It's just not fun. So she called the attitude and was like, well. Did you send right, them the invite? We'll just go out without you. I was like, what's going on? Like, you switching up. So like I said, um, after that, they started going places without me. Shay, did you send Devil they the invite? They tell me about stuff. They'll talk about stuff in front of me. And I'm like, hold on. I don't remember being there. Oh, okay. So I'm not adding up. You know, like, I don't remember that. Oh, that's when we went over here and, you know, try to make a joke. Oh, you had to be there to laugh at it. Why wasn't I there? Why you didn't call me? I know I was available. Okay. So, like I said, I got to that day. Um, We were all on the phone and my guy sister was like, just say what you have to say. So I'm like, what's going on? No, nah, I'm going to keep it quiet. You know, whatever. I was like, no, if you need to tell me something, what's good? Like, I don't know what's going on. So she was like, well, I just don't think, like, we should be cool no more. I said, stop playing. You know, I'm like, you, you got to be playing. Like, what are you talking about? And she just like, no, I just feel like you just don't get real life stuff. I said, what is this about again? Nah, you got an easy job. You don't do nothing. What? She said, I just sit on my ass all day and do nothing. That's exact words. I'm like, we have nursing homes. When do I sit down? Like, these clients need something all day. If I'm not cooking, I'm cleaning around. I'm getting them ready for you. So what are you talking about? Nah, it's just, it's just crazy how you just, you know, you ain't got to work hard like the rest of us. I said, you wouldn't have to work hard either. My mother treats you just like her own. So what are you talking about? When we were going on cruises, even as a teenager, my mom like, I already know she coming. Go ahead, pay for tickets and all. Never ask for the money back. So I'm like, what are you talking about? We started going back and forth, yelling, saying things that we know we don't mean. I just ended it right there. I said, we don't never have to talk again because for what you're doing, it makes no sense to me because what we're arguing about right now, it's obviously some other reason, but you don't really want to tell me what's the deep down reason. So yeah. ever since that day, we never talked again. Crazy thing is when I moved in my house in this neighborhood, that was like 23 years old, 23, 24. She's around the corner. To this day, she lives around the corner from me. We have not spoken, ever. And this wow. was over 25 years ago. Never spoken Do anymore. you think she liked you, liked you? <laughs> yeah, because for the most part... No, no, we, did she like you, liked you? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, like that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
it could have been because she was exploring a lot of things mm -hmm. and she, and she was knew you, doing you wasn't things gonna go that, that route. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of things. Because that's what that sound me. like. That's what mm -hmm. it sound like. She would sit up here and go out with this dude, this dude, this dude, this dude. I wouldn't know about it until we all would get on the phone. Mm -hmm. We're talking. And she like, nah, 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 nah. My god sister would say something. But see, what had happened was when she said that, we know she lying. We like, you did do it with <laughs> old boy. And like a few years ago, some people would come up to me in my neighborhood. Like, your cousin, a wild girl. I'm like, oh. Come on. And some people, it was people that I wouldn't even think she would go for. But she wanted to do her thing. I said, I ain't going to judge you. Do what you want to do. But I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going for these people. But so I really think, think that's what it was. Mm-hmm. A lot. Because she was mad that I wouldn't take one for the team sometimes. I'm like, I'm not mm. doing that. Especially some of the people that she would tell me to take one for the team for. I was like, it ain't happening. I, mm -mm, it's not happening. I'll find a ride home. You can stay here. <laughs> so I was mad, upset, hurt. I was crying for days because I'm like, you're basically my sister and we're not friends anymore. We never talk. I done rode past her house, house a few times. She didn't rode past mine. I done seen her. But even when her mom passed, I couldn't do it. I didn't go. My mom went because that was her friend, but I didn't go. Shay mm -hmm. Arts. Okay. I want you to clarify the question. Can you share with us one of your fallouts that you've had in the past that was non-fixable? Um, um, I want to start off by saying that uh, I'm the middle child out of seven, and I have five sisters so i have dealt with a variety of female attitudes um, personalities and shenanigans um but i also have, wasn't raised with them and so um i've fallen out with with sisters much less friends um for not understanding but just to give um like a recent situation um, because I never had a close relationship with my sisters, I've never really grew up with having close relationships with girls, um, with females, even with bouncing around every year from different schools and whatever. Um, I've never been able to have like long term relationships. So when I do catch a vibe with someone, I hold on into their vibe until it changes. Um, most recently in the metaverse, um, during the summertime, I became very very close with this young lady like we were we were so cool we would call each other sisters and that's just how close we were with the vibe we would call each other every day whatever um but i also have other friends other people that i go to for their energy um so the most recent time we're in vr chat we're all hanging out i'm hanging Hanging out with this girl who I've been vibing with almost every single day for two solid straight months. We trying to we building this bond. We trying to make a friendship. Um, in comes a new friendship, someone else who's who's who has interest in me, and we're trying to and they start to try to build the bond with me. But these two girls don't like each other, and so it came to a point where I had to choose between where they were telling me I had to choose between this grown relationship and this grown relationship. And when I tried to tell them to understand from my perspective, I didn't grow up with those type relationships. So when I feel that energy for someone, I try to, I want to try to keep that bond with them, regardless of what you two have going on. But then they go, then they go into that, if you're my friend, you wouldn't be with that person who's not my friend because we have beef. But your beef isn't my beef. You Both of you tell me your beef. I tell you you're wrong, and I tell you you're wrong, and there's no consensus between you two. But now, do you, so now it's, so now you both lost a friend, and you want me to lose a friend. I didn't feel like that was fair, and so I lost both of those relationships because I didn't want to choose. Because I couldn't choose. Whether I lost, whether I hung up with this person and then left that person they'll be wrong because I connected with both of them and so I choose I chose to let both those relationships go because that would put me in even think about it now that put me in a very bad 
mental spot of trying to build this friendship and getting close. And then they try to make you choose between, you know, the bond should build and so that was my most recent falling out, so I don't know. I feel you. I hate that, that happened like that because I would have wanted to connect with both of them, but mm -hmm. All right. Craig Goddess. Yes. Can you share with us one of your falling outs that was not repairable, not fixable? Oh, girl, yes, I can, child. Well, I'm going to say the one that I feel hurt me most was me going to Puerto Rico, was me, one, shutting down my business for six days to go with my best friend to Puerto Rico to Puerto Rico for his birthday for those six days and it was the month of January and first quarter of my business so that month for me is like a critical time in business just to you know keep your numbers up and things like that jumpstart your year and all that and me taking six days off it's, it's like cutting into my sales you feel me but he's my best friend before I even had this you know what I'm saying so um we go out of town and pretty much he act like a completely different person around his other friends that he had around the world. So we all went on a group trip. He sent us all itineraries and everything. We all met each other. Mind you, we was friends for like five years. So um, he, I never really hung out with them like out of town, like on the scene. He always like brought them to my house or they was always like at his house or whatever. And we would, you know, kick it or whatever. But I had never, um, interacted with him and them and us out and about you know so that was my first time being out and about with them in Puerto Rico and um long story short the trip it just did not go as planned as the itinerary said um I'm a type of person where I go out of town I need to make sure I need to know where I'm going what time I'm going and what I eat don't matter, you know what I'm saying? Because you can always find food. But I need to know where I'm going, how I'm getting there, how I'm getting back. My travel, my my travel is my most important. Like me having vehicles when I, when I get where I'm going, and me um pretty much knowing where I'm going um uh, going to, going to be and research where I'm gonna go and the things I plan to visit when I get there or whatever. So we made this big itinerary or whatever, and it was about eight. It was about eight of us, and um when we got to the airport, they did not have a rental car, so. Um, I actually had a Jeep, so luckily I could fit all of them in my car, but two of them had to sit in the trunk. <laughs> so, um, it worked out like one, I think it was even one of them, one of them had to sit in the trunk, but it worked out and they was able to get their car the following day, whatever the case may be. Long story short, nothing went as planned that was put onto the itinerary because, um, uh, the people did, some people didn't have like the funds or whatever. And they didn't say that. They just was just like, no, they don't want to go. And I didn't know that they didn't have these funds. Because if that was the case, I would have paid for it because it was my best friend's birthday. And I just wanted to make sure things went as he put on his itinerary. Despite if they had the funds or not. Like, they may have communicated to him, but he never communicated it to me. So, long story short, um, the trip just was all out a mess like they went and did stuff without me like taking pictures at the puerto rico sign and um it's just like he acted like he didn't even know me y'all like it was like a whole nother person like i seen a whole nother person when we was out of town like it's almost like i didn't know him and yeah like he wasn't calling me letting me know okay we're about to go here about to go there at this time so make sure you're ready and stuff like that so it just was like he just made me feel like an outsider and um long story short he told um we ended up talking about it we talked about it after the trip or whatever and well actually the day before the trip we got into an argument or whatever because i felt like he did something without asking me and he did not include me in that and i just was like wow like how could you do that and he called my phone and I didn't answer my phone because I was just over the way he was treating me the whole trip. And I had been being nice all the rest of the days. Mind you, we out there for six days. I had been nice for the whole five days. This last day, I was fed up because I'm leaving with a lot of money. I left, I brought money that I didn't even get to spend, you know, and it was just like, 
damn, like we really came out here for this. And, you know, it was like a wasted trip. So I really was feeling bad, you know, and then I just was fed up. I didn't want to talk and how he was treating me. It was just like, I was like, dang, like he wasn't calling me when it was like time to leave, when it's time to go, go get food. Like when when it's time to go to the next event, he wasn't calling me. He'll call me and be like, where you at? We here. I'm like, I'm at the hotel. I've wait, been waiting on y'all to let me know y'all ready. Like, you know, y'all didn't communicate with me what's going on. And I and you know I was just like left out, but all of them like knew what was going on. I was just the only one that was left out. So it's like he made me feel left out because they are like his friends. You get what I'm saying? So was he using and those I'm moments like, to again, make you look bad? No, it wasn't to make me look bad. I feel I just feel like I was forgotten about because they were there. You know how like you bring all your friends out of town and you got friends that you've been friends with longer than everybody else right Mm -hmm. so you so used to y'all just doing y'all and being y'all on thing you in the back of your mind you done damn forgot that i'm there you get what i'm saying like we in the same hotel i I, I, I ain't never forgot nobody like that crazy i don't know what it was i don't set up yeah When I tell you, like, it was like they pretty much was doing their own thing. Like, they, so it was him, his friend, um, his friend, all their friends, all of them have been friends longer than me and him have been friends. Like, we've been friends for four years. They have been friends for 15 and 12 years. You get what I'm saying? So they are, like, used to each other and all of that type of stuff like that right there, I guess. And I guess they forgot that I was there. Like, that's how I feel. Like, I feel like they forgot that I was there. Like they pretty much just was doing their own thing, and then I'll call them and be like, Where y'all at? And they'll be like, Oh, we went to Walmart. I'm like, What? Y'all went to Walmart? Why y'all ain't telling me y'all was going to Walmart? We didn't the microwave, it was COVID restrictions, and we can't want about food in the hotel because the hotel we was in, they didn't have microwaves, you know, like them, them, in them hotels in Puerto Rico, they took all the microwaves out to prevent with COVID and all. So we had to really go buy a microwave to warm up the food. And I was like, are you going to get a microwave? And he was like, um, uh, let me call you back. And it just was like, I was just being treated like an outsider. Wow. So long story short, we I ended up the last day, I did not answer my phone. I went and I seen everything I wanted to see before I left. So I wouldn't feel like I had a wasted trip. And then I had a good time, got me some trinkets and souvenirs for the fam. And um, I ain't talked to him no more. We got to the airport. I got, we was on the same plane. And, and we ain't say shit to each other on the plane. I went to his his um mama house and I went and got my car, and I went and got my car and I went home. I told his mom, "Thank you for letting me park my car there." I pretty much acted like ain't nothing happened. Then I went home, you know what I'm saying? And after that, we ain't talked for like two whole weeks. And so I hit him up one day and I was just like, "So what's up? Like, do you want to fight or what?" Because I'm trying to figure out why the fuck you was acting so fake in Puerto Rico. I was really letting you slide because it was your birthday, but I do feel like you left me out. And yeah, we need to talk about this shit. And he was like, "Well, shit, pull up. I'm at Creole's house." Da da da. So I pull up. You know, I brought me some wine in or whatever. So I get there, whatever. He's sitting there with his legs crossed, and I'm like, "So." And so I sit down. I was like, oh, uh-uh, don't be crossing your legs on me. Because mind you, you know your friends. So I'm like, don't be crossing your legs on me. Like, what's up with you? Like, why is it that when we was in Puerto Rico, you would treat me like a complete stranger? But anytime you done been somewhere with me, out of town with me and my friends, I, I have never treated you or no type of way or left you out. I always be like, come on, EJ. I check for everybody. Why is it that you didn't treat me that same way when we was in Puerto Rico? How I do you when you be around my friends? Not only that, you are a gay male, and I bring you around my straight male brothers and friends, and they accept you for who you are, and even though you feel uncomfortable, they don't make you uncomfortable because you with me, and I make sure that, you know what I'm saying, and I make sure they don't say nothing out of the, out the way, you know, because... I hang with a lot of street dudes and they do, they can be like that. But if you're not acting all, you know, out of pocket, they be chilling. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And he wasn't the type of person to just act all crazy and stuff, you know, with the doing too much and trying to holler at him and stuff like that. He was pretty much cool. So they was cool. But it just was like, I done brought you in all of these type of situations and scenarios. And even though you feel uncomfortable, I knew you was uncomfortable and I'll pull you with me and be like, what you doing? Come on, let's come over here. Hey, this is this person. You know, I introduce you to people try to make you feel more comfortable you get what i'm saying like i don't i never left him excluded even though he felt uncomfortable and um you know um he told me he was just like i was like you know i closed my business down for six days for your birthday if you was gonna treat me like that i could have stayed here 
he was like, oh, your business. You know what? He was like, you you think your money can do for you. I was Whoa. like, what? I was like, you know what? I'm out. I left the wine and I just took my head back to my car and he was he was walking up to my car and I pulled out on his ass and I squirted the fuck out on his ass and I ain't <laughs> talked to his ass since. Because it, after you say that, they let me know everything I need to know. Yeah. Why would you tell me I think my money can do for me? I never throw my money up in your face. I never told you how much money I got. I never I never acted no type of way towards you. Anytime you needed something, I'm always there. Like, period. And you sit right here and tell me you think your money can do for you. What? Because I tell I told you I closed my business down to come be here for with you for your birthday. And you sitting right here treat me like I'm nobody. I'm not even your friend. When we in another state. So that let me know a whole lot about our friendship. And at that point, it showed me that we ain't friends no more. Yeah. That was enough for me. It's nothing else that you can say that can that can fix, repair that, I feel. Because that's how you really feel about me. That's how I take it. I don't take it as you saying something that you was mad I would have took it better. He would have been like, shit, fuck you, you uh, ugly bitch, or something like that. I would have took that better. But, you know, to tell me I think my money can do for me? Oh, we got a problem, Houston. Your ass is out of here. Yeah. So, that was what happened with me, girl. I appreciate that, crack. The aroma scent. I really don't have any recent fallouts. Like I said, you know, most people that I deal with are my friends. Um, my associates, I don't have those type of fallouts. So you haven't experienced so, anyone trying to clout chase or try to make you look bad in the process of you of rising course, to the top? But, uh, <laughs> I'd rather not even give that any energy. <laughs> I'd rather not even give that any energy. Mm-mm. Nope, I'm good. All right. Mm -mm. And Lisa, Lisa? Are you on mute? Um, I had this one friend. She, we've been friends. I was 13 years old. She was two years younger than me. But we've been friends for a long time. Um... As we grew, as we grew up, you know, I was in middle school. She was still like she was just starting middle school, I think. And I knew her mama. Her mama knew my mama. We were always together. We always hung around. Some some sort of like yours, like we always hung around each other. Like we was real, real close. She was like a sister to me. But as I got older, I started high school before she did. So when you know when you get in high school, you make more friends. So I had made new friends and um, I was still like calling her, you know, checking on her, you know, still hanging with her, still supporting her. We still hung out all day. I guess as she got older and she started um, getting in high school, her, her whole vibe was changing. Like as I would call her, um, she would be like, what you, or she'll be like, it'll be a whole different energy. Like the energy not there. Like how I used to call her, hey, it'd be like, hey, but then when you call her next time, it'd be like, she don't want to talk to you or something like that. And I used to ask her, like, why are you acting like that? Like, what's going on? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm just, I'm just chilling. Mm. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd try to start a conversation and it'd be like, she'll try to rush you out the phone and be like, all right, I got to go back. So I'd be like, that's weird. Like, what's going on? I obviously knew something wrong. So I waited like two weeks. I waited two weeks, and then I had called her again. I said, look, we need a, a, a deep talk because you know you like my sister. We don't do these. Like, what's going on? So she was like, she started telling me, like, how she was jealous of me, of how how I moved, like, how I was in high school. I had friends. I have a lot of guy friends. And she felt like, she felt like, um, I was with them more than she was, but she didn't understand that her mother, 
I told her her mother and her father, her stepdad, was strict on her. So most of the time, she was on punish me for I don't know how long when. And she wouldn't have her phone for I don't know how long. It would be like a year. So I used to tell her, like, <laughs> literally, I had to... I had these friends to hang out with, and you was gonna punish me. And she still was like, "Well, I still feel like you should still, you know, contact me." I'm like, "How? You didn't have your phone." And then when you did have your phone, I contacted you every single day when you got your phone back. But I still kind of, you know, try to, you know, as me as a friend, I still try to, you know, understand them to their point of view. But till I don't. You know, because I'm trying to, I'm kind of a forgiving friend. Like, I, I take my friendships very seriously. So, this will really hurt me the most because I forgave her when she said she was just me. I still was trying to be her friend. But then it was just still the energy towards me was just like, no. So, I had to tell her, like, I don't think we could be friends no more because the energy that you just give me is like, it's not the same that you give others. And then, you know, when I had introduced her to my other friend who I'm friends with today, they still like, you know, they still cool, but I'll be like, you know, it's okay. Like, you still treat me like it's so it's like I'm I'm nobody to you. Like I'm like we never been through a lot and it's still to this day like I don't know what he is still, but the energy is just wasn't there and I just I just stopped completely talking to her because I was like you will never tell me deeply how you feel which I already you know I can't do nothing about that. But yeah. so we stopped being friends back in twenty twenty and I'm 26 years old, and that was like two two years ago, two or three years ago, or two or three, yeah, three years ago, 2020. So yeah, we was on the all, but yeah, we just completely stopped being friends now to this day, and I think it's because of the same issue. She was jealous. I had more friends, and she got more friends. Now that she was out of high school, she had got more friends, and then she started moving different. And then, you know, people change as they get older. That's why I said people change when they get older. And I still, I think I still try to be a good friend. I think I was, I am a good friend because I still was there for her. Like, with everything possible, I was there to support her. But she was, she would never, like, come to all my events. And I still forgave. And I still was there, you know, still was there for her. For her, you know, her brother died, still was there. Her mama has everything going on. I love her mama to death. And I still with there for her mom, still with there for her birthday. But she would never give me I just looked at everything that she would do. Like she never did like after the few years. She never did nothing for my birthday. Never went all out. Never supported me in the ways I supported her. So I was just like, she was never my friend. And that's only how I feel. Yeah. So. Thank you, Nisa. And for me, I had two falling outs. Um, one, what get, kills me, I'm not even going to say about women, but it's messed up, you know, how we can call the girlfriend every day about some nigga, every day, every day, every day. And then the second some real shit happened, in this case, my grandmama died, and I don't hear from me. I get a text message saying, condolences, and wish me luck on my dance class tomorrow. The fuck? Wow. <clears throat> mm. I have something. It wasn't so much a falling out. I just backed out of it. I saw the shade. I saw the 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 way I was being talked to. And I said, you know what, this ain't for me. And I just kindly bowed out, curtsy, and left. Exit stage left. Um, I met a young girl, a young lady, I won't say young girl, young lady, um, a couple of weeks ago on TikTok. I was new to TikTok, so I was like, you know, you know, um, let's let's hang out, let's um go live on TikTok together. Cause I was, you know, going live, going live is it's real jittery. You you get real nervous. So she was gonna go live with me. The first night we went live, it was like, oh, I, I got this degree, I got that degree. This is not what we're here for. We're here to tell people about our business and get people to purchase from us. 
don't nobody care about what school you went to, what college you went to, how many degrees you got when you're talking about your business. They just want to know about the business. I'm like, okay, that's that was that incident. One night I was on live with her. My daughter was on the live and my, my daughter noticed it. And I said, you know, I thought it was just me. I thought maybe I was being a little sensitive, you know, and I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't, you know, giving her the benefit of the doubt. But my daughter saw it. Then again, um, Shani, Shani D, she's here on the Oculus. She was on live with us one night and she was like, uh-uh, I didn't like that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. I'm thinking it's, it's me being too sensitive because sometimes, you know, I could get a little, little sensitive. So I'm like, well, maybe it's just me. Then this one night, this one night was the straw that broke the camel's back. She asked me about my business and I told her, I said, I don't want my products in Sephora, Ulta. Um, I would prefer my products to be in something like Whole Foods, Publix, or, you know, somewhere where people go for organic food because my product is not just for everybody. It's also geared towards people that have tree nut allergies. And that's what my products are for. And I would prefer my products there. She tried to make me feel like, like my, like I didn't have, um, like I was small minded. Like I didn't know any better. And I'm like, you know, and I sat there like tap the brown with a smile on my face. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This is it. And I kindly just clicked my live off. And I heard her say, oh, B, B left a lot. I sure did. I ain't heard from her since. She knew exactly what she had done. She knew exactly what she had done. And she knew I didn't like it. And that's the only, only thing that I can give y'all. Because I don't, you know, like I said, I don't get too close to too many people. Yeah. I keep my right. circles so small as just me in my circle. But I do have people that I confide in. I do have people that I talk to on a regular basis. Or sometimes some of them is not on a regular basis. But I can pick up the phone and they're there. But mm -hmm. some of these other folks, this is why, you know, and I tell, someone got an attitude when I said this one time. But I have... You know, I have friends that I know from, from grade school. And I told her one day, I said, you know, me and my best friend, her name was Tanya. She died. And I never took up another friend. I never did. Somebody I talked to, I associated with, yeah. But you that was my friend. She went to her grave with my secrets. That was my friend. And I never took up another friend. But see, I'm going to say this, D, adding to your story. It's under it's undercut hand things like that that prevent me from having mm -hmm. relationships with women. You know, it, it's it's too yes. much of that passive-aggressive behavior, you know. And nobody got time for that. I met a young lady the other day, and I know this was God-ordained because I've been out of church for a while since the pandemic. And I'm used to going to church every Sunday, you know, doing, doing, doing my prayers, reading my word, doing all of this. But because of that, I, I haven't been diligent. I haven't been consistent and persistent, you know, in doing it. And when I met Ingrid and she told me one day, she said, oh, I'm writing in my prayer journal. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, ask her to be a prayer partner. And I asked her and she was like, sure, no problem. And we get up every day and we pray, we read we, um, affirmations, we read her, um, her prayer journal, not her prayer journal, but um, she have these books with things for, you know, it gives you the word and gives you um, inspirations. And we, we get up and we do, and I find our relationship is good. It's good. But that other one, I was like, you know what? Mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm good. Bowed out, nice and graceful. Put that one finger up. Right. And I'm out. I'm out. I'm that out. Church finger. Mm -mm. That, that's right. That church finger. I, I'm out. <laughs> because I don't have time in my right. day or in my life mm -hmm. to argue with a boop, 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 boop. I don't have time to be arguing over you not being worthy of friendship. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know who you are. You look in the mirror at you every day. Every you know day. what you do to other people that ain't right. And then you call yourself mm -hmm. a Christian. Yes. And mm -hmm. this is why people don't go to church. Mm -hmm. This is just my people don't go to church, but I can't let her behavior block me from what God has called me to do. Yeah, I can't. So I stage left, one finger up, mm -hmm. and I'm out. Mm -hmm. And I also notice a lot of women that if from a lot of women are toxic because they're dealing with a toxic man. So when you just gotta <laughs> yeah. remove yourself all together when it's when you see that toxicity going on. 
crack. I want to I choose you. not to be in the presence of toxicity. Anything mm-hmm. toxic, I don't, I don't want no part of it. That's like eating bad food. You eat some mm-hmm. bad food, you're going to be in the toilet throwing up or pooping one. And bad people in your life in, or in your spirit, in your space, will do the same thing to you. Yeah. Because you'll start to, mm-hmm. how they say, um, you um, product of your environment, you become a product of that. And then here you are being toxic. No, that's that's not what I want for me. Mm-mm. Craig, let me ask you this. How do you handle people or quote unquote friends that just come to you when they only need something? Cause you you a help you a helpful friend. You a Excuse good person. I need something. Nisia, hold on. Easy, hold on. Easy okay if I invite Tiny. Tiny face. Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. So um I really don't deal with people that always need something. Um Mm-hmm. I make this shit be known at the door at the gate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if, okay, first of all, you don't ever make yourself available for nobody. Okay. Then, first of all, first of all, people got to have their own hustle. But if I ha- have, I ever encountered somebody like that? Yes, I have. Every time they come when they need some, the first time they come, they need some. Okay. I got you. The second time you come, you need some. Mm-hmm, okay. I got you. Now, the third time you come, you need some. Okay. What the fuck you got going on? See, mm-hmm. it's gonna be what the fuck you got going on. What's up? What you going through? What's up? Why are you always needing something? What what you going through? Mm-hmm. Like you you need something for a reason. What you doing? You know, I see if they protecting any drugs. I see it just depends on how frequent it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I pay attention to the signs. So if it's like on some uh I got a friend that I said, call me if you need something, then it's different. But if it's somebody mm-hmm. that's that's just like always like calling your phone just wants a couple dollars or something like that get the fuck out my phone go find some money somewhere by and hang up period like i don't i don't i don't i don't get people that that type of um energy where they can play with me like that you know what i'm saying so um what i tend to do is if that situation did occur the first time i got you you know the second time if it's you know if it's a, a second time in the same week i'm like hold on goddamn it what the hell you got going on you know but if it's like mm-hmm. a second time let's say three six months later i'm not gonna question it now if it's the third time they, they say they need something it depends on how, i'm gonna just say it depends on the frequency and the uh, um so, so the what person, if we're not, the person, so what, the frequency. What if we're not talking about money? What if you're, this is the person that, that constantly needs advice, constantly needs reassurance, constantly needs uplift. Oh, I'm down. The fuck? I'm down. Hell yeah. I'm there for but, that. But, but Hell what yeah. If it's not monetary. Crack, what if they just trying to just drain you of your upliftment? You know, you got other things to do. Though. I'm like, girl, look, I'm like, girl, look, call me when you did what I told you to do last time. I'm not going back and forth. I love you, boo. I'm going to talk to you later, girl. You're going to get through this shit. Remember what I told you last time. Bye, girl. Period. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh-uh. We ain't, ain't doing going that. back and forth with you niggas. Yeah, uh uh-uh. gotta. Sometimes you got to tell your friend shit like that. Like, girl, did we just talk about this? Now, if it's a different situation that done occurred, let's say if it could be um something that they talking to you about and you told them a solution to it, but they just been scared to walk out on faith or, you know, it could be any type of thing like that. It depends on the situation. I'm going to say it depends on the situation. Like, give me a situation and I'll tell you. And that's how it, I handle them accordingly. I'm gonna just say it like that. So it's yeah. just accordingly. Yeah, I'm, I just say I handle it accordingly to the person and the situation okay. and how frequent. Yeah, I don't loan matters. money, so I don't have that problem. I understand that. I don't loan money. I if I have it to give you, I'm gonna give it to you. But if I don't have it to give, you ain't getting it. Yeah, you ain't getting it, and I'm not taking that L because you don't want to give me my money back. No, mm-hmm. Mm-mm. so I'd rather just give it to you that way you don't have to ever worry about not speaking to me or whatever because you didn't have you didn't get my money back. No, it's yours. Yeah, I wanted to share this story before we close on out and everything. Um, one of the reasons, one of the things I fell out with somebody here recently, the same person that told me she was jealous of me way back then, we recently wind up getting back familiar with one another and i noticed that um like i understand facebook keeps you updated on people's lives but she was really 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 invested in that you know (laughs) and i don't really get on facebook like that but it's like 
I can I notice that we'll have consistent conversation, you know, communication. And then if I upload something on, I guess Facebook, and then now I won't hear from you. And that's I don't know if she was like comparing lives or judging, you know, but she's that type of person. And I'll be like, I'm calling to check on you. You seeing I'm calling, but then you'll text me. And I'm like, I don't have time for weird weird behavior like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, if, right. If, if you call me, I'm gonna answer the phone. I'm, you know, I'm gonna be there to support you, whatever. But if all the inconsistency, wishy washy stuff, I don't have time for in my life. Mm 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 mm. And we too grown for that. Yep. Be truthful with yourself, so you can be truthful mm-hmm. with everybody else. Right. And that that's the the biggest thing. A lot of people don't want to be accountable. Yeah. Self accountability is the mm. yes. Self accountability is here, here. Mm. And mm-hmm. a lot of us do right. not want to be accountable for the things that we do and don't do. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why. And when why you don't take accountability for have, have, have uh, yeah yeah ended yeah. When you don't take accountability for yourself, you'll do anything, and it's okay with you. Because there's no ca- accountability, you don't see nothing wrong in what you're doing or saying, and then you'll 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 glass it up or gloss it up with, well, I'm I'm real, I'm being real. No, you're not. No, you're not. You just you just spewing out stuff out your mouth. Yeah. And I also want to say that um, do also with lack of accountability, a lot of people would throw out there to me since I'm an only child, you know, you just feel like that because you're the only child. You don't understand that me Mm-mm. being only child has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you can you can have the only child syndrome in a, in a in a family of six people, too. So it doesn't mean because you're an only child that you feel that way. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, we have a new face, fresh People face in the me. building. Miss Tiny Faith, how you doing? Good, are uh, you? Doing good. Hey. Quick question before we close on now, because you did catch us while we got to close on now. Do you consider yourself a good person and a good friend? Yeah. Yeah. The best person yeah, to ask is her, is her friend. <laughs> ask her friend. Is she a friend. Yeah. Can you validate that answer? Let me know, Dee Dee. <laughs> Let me know. As I she and I already talked about you. I, re- I talked about you. I asked you. I said, when I met you, mm-hmm. you we became close. You talked to me. We building on our friendship more. You the one that I call my best friend. The only one on here that I call my best friend. So yeah, mm. you a good friend. <laughs> That's, it's just like in marriages you you can't mm-hmm. ask a husband what kind of husband he is you have to ask his wife she'll tell you what kind of husband he is and you can't ask a husband you know, a wife about you know a, a wife about is she a good wife you have to ask her husband because these are the people that experience you the people that see you they only see the exterior the people that experience you they see the underlying stuff about yeah, you yeah it's true well before we close on now, uh, I want us to go around and just tell, like, um, express what do you value most in your friendships? Start with Miss Tiny Faith. Man, uh, communication, loyalty. Yeah. yeah. I value honesty, loyalty, or mm-hmm. communication. Be value yourself first. Value yourself first, because if you value you, you'll value me. And that'll make our friendship better, because we value us, we value each other. Yes. Shay? I'm Uh-oh. going with right. uh-huh. understand, um, understand the difference between your friends and your acquaintances, and cleave to your friends, and um, treat your acquaintances as they give themselves. Miss <laughs> Ferrari? I don't even know. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, definitely, just like Didi, I mean, trust is number one for me. Mm-hmm. Honesty, and, and just always being real with me. Like I said, no matter what it is, if it's gonna hurt mm-hmm. me, help me, whatever, be honest with me. That's how I know that you gonna be a real friend to me. So I, that's yeah. what I definitely value. Okay. 
And one more question before we all go. I know everybody kind of said that they got more male friends than female friends. Do you feel that's mm-hmm. more on the females that you come across and, or, or the fact you are willing to have those friendships, but you, it just depends on the female, basically? I th- well, as far as me go, because I have a lot of male friends, um, it's kind of different because male friends, they more laid back. They ain't on most of them. You got some of them that be bitches, niggas, excuse my yeah. <laughs> I was about to say it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but they be more laid back. There's somebody you could just mm-hmm. come to, they tell you what's real. Like, they just tell you straight up. They ain't on no, you know, envy stuff. Most of, they ain't finna hate on no woman. So they more like you gonna be mm-hmm. more comfortable talking to a man Aww. more than a female. That's just come up from me because, you know, you got to watch out mostly for females because, you know, most females mm-hmm. don't know how to be friends. Mm-hmm. And it's just the truth. Mm-hmm. But why? Mm-hmm. That's that's my question. Why? Jealousy. What happened? Jealousy. What happened that we of the same same same. Uh, what is this caliber? Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're women. We go through the same things. We bleed. We give birth. All of this. And we cannot hold each other up. We can't. Why? Mm-hmm. It's the jealousy. It's the mindset. It's the but where, where did the yeah. jealousy come from? Where did the jealousy come from? Because why are we jealous of each other? I want I want to see everybody win. I don't never want to see right. you falling. Right. If you falling, right. girl, I'm down there with you, getting you up, up out mm-hmm. of that muck. You right. got to get up because we can't walk together if you down in the muck. Exactly. Right. Why do we think crazy against each I, other? Is it crazy that I blame social media for that? Cause social media no, it's not. Got, no, it's not. got it to where all these girls want to act like all these other girls. Mm. You That's know? why I don't watch um reality shows where like it's girls, a competition. And women yeah. is calling each other bitches and hoes and you know just going mm-hmm. at each other because that right there that's a that's a bad depiction of what women hood should be. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a very bad depiction. When when are we gonna lock arms and walk with each other, fix each other's crowns? I'm using my real hands like y'all can see me. Right. You know, fix each other's crowns, girl. What's going uh-huh. on? What, what's going on with you today? You you're not acting yourself. What can yeah. I do to help you? What can I do? Right. If it ain't but right. a prayer. Right. You know, but why are we so backstabby to each other when we going through the same shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I sometimes, like she said, mm-hmm. it's social media, it's these reality TV shows, it's a mm-hmm. lot of that, and they look at it and they idolize it. But what happened before so the reality show? Because reality show, mm-hmm. they, they wasn't here 20 years ago. What happened sure. before that? We we have yet. I You know what I do? I blame it on, on slavery. I really do. Because you had that, that white chick in the <laughs> house. And even though she was a woman, she still looked at you as dirt. You breastfed mm-hmm. her kids, fed her kids, because she was too lazy to do her own, to take care of her own kids. Mm-hmm. You took care of her kids. And for some reason, it didn't just be colorized. It became for all women. Mm-hmm. And then you, you still had, you had your, your color, your, your female of your color mm-hmm. in, the, in the same slavery, uh, whatever you want to call it, the same group, and she would go against you too. Who is yeah. calling me? Oh, crack. Hold on. <laughs> but yes, yeah, a lot of that. Need to get um, yeah, she needed to get um, Sometimes some people make it boil down to light skin and dark skin. Oh, you get treated like this because you're like, you get treated like this because you're dark skin and like Sometimes it boils down to that, and these could be two people that can really be great friends, but you're gonna let certain opinions come between, you know what I mean? It's an opinion a lot of people play on your mind, you weren't even thinking about that two seconds ago, but now that somebody's pointed it out and the advantages Mm -hmm. and disadvantages of this person, now you're like, Well, maybe you're right, and you might start acting a certain type of way because now this person to put this in your head. You have to think for yourself. Like I, like I said, I've never been. I'm the same way. Like I think I hang around men because I don't have to worry about being in a line at a club, and this girl, my homegirl, sitting right up. You see what that girl got on? You see what that is? I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. Yeah. When I come out, I want to party. Think I think you have look fun. cute today. I want to yeah. chill. Yeah. Just tell me mm-hmm. I look nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. That's all you got to tell me. Mm-hmm. Like, I want the vibe to be cool. We came out to have fun. 
not to sit up here and pick at this one, pick at that one. You don't even know mm-hmm. this lady, and you got your face mm-hmm. turned up to her. Why? Mm-hmm. 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 You know, so it's it's crazy. I, it's just a a a, a uh, what's the word? It, it's just a, a a spirit that has trickled down. It is. Mm, it is. Yes. And it has attached itself to the female species. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Mm. Species to be yep. envious and, 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 and against one another. Mm-hmm. And where do we start to break this cycle? Where do we start to break it? Because it, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a, a, a cancer that's going around. Yep. It is. You can't, you can't be in, in the presence of other women without it be a, a jealousy thing. Why mm-hmm. are we jealous of each other? When with, with me, you can have whatever I have. I don't have no problem right. with telling you information. I don't have no problem exactly. with researching and giving you the information. Right. So, I, you know, it's just, it's ugly. It's an ugly place. Mm-hmm. It's an ugly place. So I said, like, you know, that we're kind of like the last of a dying breed with that kind mm-hmm. of thing. The positive yes. energy. We feed each other energy. You get what I mean? And mm-hmm. you don't know how much that can do to a person. Just you saying, you know, you look nice today. Or, you know, I like that mm-hmm. hairstyle. Like, that's nice. You might not mm-hmm. even know this person. Walking down mm-hmm. the street and just telling that person. Because you don't know what kind of day they've had. That's right. That right there mm-hmm. alone could have made that's them right. feel so much better. They could have been going somewhere mm-hmm. to commit suicide mm-hmm. exactly. and because you said you know and you're because, beautiful that that just exactly. calmed them and took that that, mm-hmm. that suicidal thought away from them that's why just mm-hmm. being acknowledged stop this, speaking yeah. this out your mouth mm-hmm. you gotta stop speaking that acknowledgement that, that nastiness you know what i mean mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. spew some nice energy you never know like how much better you can get off of your own words yep you know you i found not to be toxic to no mm-hmm. one exactly right amen and I try not to be in situations with people, you know, sitting up here talking about the next person. I try to walk away from them because I'm just like, I don't even know this person. But from what you're telling me, I'm forming an opinion off of y'all situation. Mm-hmm. So now I'm not liking this girl because of what the problem is y'all have. Mm-hmm. I don't even know this person. And she yep. could be the coolest person ever. Mm-hmm. We, had this you, like, we had a friend mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I had one friend like that on here. And because of the, the fights and the arguments that she was getting in with people on here, they associated me with that. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, mm-hmm. okay, so they're thinking we're like that. And I'm wondering why we go in places, I hear like the little snick, the giggles and stuff. I wonder what's mm-hmm. going on. Like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But once I started venturing outside that person, oh, going out and with someone, people, so. everything else like that. All the statements I heard was, Ferrari, you cool as mm-hmm. hell. Like, I thought she was like this because you ain't with her. So I'm mm-hmm. guilty by association now. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm like, see, I don't like that. You know? But see, people should and be it was having crazy. better discernment than that, though, to prejudge you just based yeah. off of that, though. But that's how people are nowadays. They go off mm-hmm. of what other people say about you. It's just mm-hmm. like reviews. It's if you go to buy a washing machine, you read the, re- the reviews on it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how people are. They 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 review readers. How how you feel about her? What you think about her? And if you give a bad review about a person, they don't deal with you. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Only Not a real trying you for can themselves. Still decipher between all that. You get what I'm saying? No matter how mm-hmm. much dirt they might put on Shay Art's name, a real person can still decipher who she right. is. You get what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the naysayers. And even your, though we are all in avatars, your spirit still illuminates through this avatar. Oh, it do. It mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. And it does, yeah. Mm-hmm. It does. When I tell people that, some people, like, if they're new, they like, this just avatars. But when you look at an avatar, you can mm-hmm. tell sometimes when somebody's mad, upset, mm-hmm. they feel mm-hmm. some type of way. I'm like, you can look through mm-hmm. these avatars. Yep. So can. Yep. yep. Yes, indeed. You get your hands out of my face. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go on, ahead, go on now for, and do a uh, final right. word. Starting with Ferrari, Miss Ferrari, you have any final words and shout outs you want to say before we close it on now? Uh, final words, just just be kind to people. You never know. You being in a better mood, saying something nice to somebody else, how it can do for somebody else. I've had it happen to me. I wasn't having a good day. Somebody said something to me, and I was like, 
why I feel better? I don't even know you. <laughs> but for you to just say, smile, have a good day, that got in my spirit. And I did. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely shout outs to everybody that messes with me, everybody who I deal with, like who I don't deal with. If I don't know you, let's be friends. Let's turn up in here. Like, it's all good. Uh, shout outs. <laughs> shout outs definitely to King, uh, Kingpin, my baby. We definitely trying to take over this metaverse, and we are. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shay right. Arts. Um, my final words would be um, just be kind, um, give grace, and keep your bullshit at the face. Mm-hmm. Because um, we're all in here for a reason. And whatever your reason is, um, it's, it's okay. It's like, she, like we've all said, it takes nothing to be nice. Mm-hmm. And be kind, and that's that's what I want to leave with. And follow me on Instagram, Shay Arts underscore VR. Got you. And what's the name of that website, Shay? It is a real touch dot com, or if you can remember that, it's artsvr dot com. Either or, take you to my site. Boom. Okay. It's Crack Goddess. Yes, ma'am. Final Your words. Word. I just want to say. I just want to say shout out to everybody in Horizon Worlds and everybody all over the world empowering other people um, as well as being good people, good friends. Um, and uh, to those of you that are not, I hope that you find your way. Period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let's be okay, my, fi- my final words are you got to know what a friend is. You got to be a friend. You got to be a friend in order to know what a friend is. And if you would like to purchase my products, you can go to www.beorganics.info. <laughs> Again, that is www.beorganics.info. And have a blessed day. Yeah. Find you a friend. Yes, I love that. Find you a friend, a real yeah. motherfucker friend. Find you a yes. friend. Yes. Miss Double D, Miss Decia. Um, my final words is just, uh, us as women, we just have to, you know, support one another more, love on one another more because us females is not as, you know, as close as, you know, we should. So we just need to support one another, love one another, and everyone in this room. I have experienced y'all pure genuine love. Y'all have different personalities, but y'all experience is pure. Everyone in this room. I'm not lying. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I I agree. So uh, okay. um yeah, just that's my final words. I just thank you for having me. Like thank you for having me on y'all on your panel. Yeah, that's all I got. Miss Tiny, Miss Tiny. Hey, um, I just want to say, you know, be yourself. And uh, to everybody the people that's taking. to the people that's going through stuff, just know that everything is gonna be okay. <laughs> you know, trouble don't last always, and just pray. God got you. And my final words is. Jealousy can't reside where love lives. You know, mm-hmm. fill your heart with love. Do something productive. Be a blessing to somebody if you want to receive blessings. Because you because you can't receive blessings and, and be jealous at the same time. And shout mm-hmm. out to everybody that's on the panel. And once again, please like and subscribe. And if you love Kate Spade, Bessie Johnson, or any other exclusive jewelry, please visit www.prosperityboutique.com. And y'all have blessed, have a blessed evening. Yay! Yay.